Okay, I took the the fuel line out and uh, and I cracked it. <laughs> I get that, dude. It was so hard, like right here. Um, yeah, that that line is no good. Um, we're gonna have to replace that. It's no big deal. Um, just been that's what happens with these kind of nylon kind of lines or or vinyl lines. Um, all right, so we're gonna pull the tank off now. I don't think there's anything. In Okay, I got the gas tank off, uh, so what we're going to do next is, uh, I know I tuned this up before. I put brand new, um, those uh, twin electrode uh, platinum spark plugs in there, so uh, I'm pretty sure we don't have to mess around with the sparker at all. Um, so we got to try to get this carb off now. Um, so there it is. And, uh, and this doesn't move at all. That's a little alarming. That's supposed to move, but it doesn't. So that leads me to believe it's rusted shut or something. Uh, like I said, my dad put... There's actually fuel in the gas tank, too. So um, you don't want to put rusty gas tank on your bike. That's a big no-no. Um, so, so I'm pretty sure the carb is all messed up. But we're going to go pull it, and then we'll see what it looks like. Yeah, it's, it's kind of it's pretty big on the top. It's been a while since I've seen a stock carb. <laughs> I get the old FCR MX online. So here it is. It's a little dirty. I might go get the air gun and clean it up a little bit before we take the carb off. Uh, it's a lot cleaner than my bike. My bike has this wires and shit all over the place. You know, Hades Omega. You know, right? This one still has the uh, a vent hose here. For the carburetor, oh, I see. Yeah, mine doesn't have one of those. Mine has a different carb, so it doesn't have that. And one thing you're supposed to check on these things is if it's still got the foam in there, and it still does. It's hard to see, but I can see it. It's still got the foam in there, so filter still works. So that's fine. Just leave that there. Um, yeah. Okay. So, uh, and this also does have the airbox cut open on the top, so. I don't, know, I don't think that would make any difference, dude. But, um, if it runs kind of funny, I'm just going to put some uh, masking tape over that. Um, but yeah, so we're going to go get the car. I'm going to go blow some of this dust off and then we'll take the car off. I'm broken. So I was wondering what this clamp... I was cleaning up my garage and I found this clamp. And I'm like, this looks like a, it's for a carburetor clamp. And I think it's for this because there's no clamp right here. So I think my dad might have bought a clamp or something and he just never freaking installed it or something. Um, there's a front one, but there's no back one, so that's uh, not good. <laughs> so we'll, we'll install this when we put the car back in. All right, more interesting. Uh, okay, so uh, I removed the the, um, the uh, throttle lines, and let's see if the throttle moves now. Yes, it does move. Let's see, I'm twisting it, and it's moving in and out. That's what you want. <laughs> so it's not not the cables that are frozen. It's the carb that's frozen, so. Uh, I did remove the uh, choke out here. This has a remote kind of choke that goes down here. It's, um, it's so you don't have to work it on from the handlebars. It's, I think it's kind of easier down there. But it's a pro cycle add-on. Um, also, one thing I did notice is uh, there's a vacuum cap right here. So we gotta, um, we gotta take that out, and this is where the vacuum hose goes to the, uh, the gas tank. Um, Without that, without that uh, vacuum line connected to the gas tank, uh, no fuel will go into the carb. This is a vacuum activated carb, so or vacuum activated uh, fuel valve. So, all right, so now we can take it out. I think there's, I think that's all the stuff that's holding it in. It. Besides the little filter thing, um, yeah, I guess we're gonna have to disconnect that too. We're okay. So annoying. I got it out. Uh, it was a little pain in the ass to get out. Um, I had to undo the boot here and push it in. Um, you know, the usual stuff. And um, it, it's pretty in there really well. I, like I said, I don't have the stock carb on my bike, and I never have car problems on my bike because I ride my bike sometimes, you know? <laughs> oh. So here it is. Um, the slide does not move. There was some fuel in, in the fuel. This, uh, this vent hose, there was some fuel that came out of it. Um, the hose that came out of the, the vent hose is right here. Or the other vent hose. This is like a kind of like a dump hose or something. Um, yeah, and the slide does not move. That's not good. And uh, the little throttle plate does not move either. So I don't know why, uh, but we'll shoot some carb cleaner in there, and we'll hopefully that'll solve the solve the problem. We have to clean the carb. Um, yeah, hopefully 
if I shoot it with some carb cleaner, it'll it'll free it up. All right. Okay, so I've gone ahead and, and sprayed the whole carb with carb cleaner. I sprayed it in the throat and the slide and everything. I don't think it's still I don't think it's still moving. So um, so we're definitely going to have to tear into this carb. Um, so I've got a couple solutions to, to really cleaning up a carb, and I haven't used for a while because I haven't haven't had to really do this <laughs> for for a long time. Uh, what I'm going to do is uh, I got this little chemical chemical bucket that I bought a while back. And it's for just for cleaning carburetors. You're supposed to dip it in there, and then it like it soaks it, and it cleans all the orifices and stuff. But to do that, we need to remove all the the little parts like the jets and stuff, and and like all plastic stuff, and then we'll dip it in there. Um, and then if that doesn't work, uh, what I found out works really good is pine saw and an ultrasonic cleaner, and I have that also. So, but I bought the bucket a long time ago. I've only used it once, so let's let's try that one first. But uh, but first we gotta we'll. The next, uh, the next clip, we'll tear it open and then we'll see what it looks like in there. I don't think it looks too bad because I don't think there's a. Is there? That's a good question. If there's a prime on this, let me see if there's a prime on this gas tank here. Oh, there is a prime. Okay. There's. Oh, it's on on. Yeah, it's on. So this one has an on, a prime, and a reserve. So. If you put it in prime, it will just let the fuel flow out. Um, when you put it on on, it only opens when the valve is open. So that's probably how he got the fuel to go in the carb. Um, he would just put it on prime. Um, so I hope he drained the carb before freaking thing, man. Uh, uh, yeah, so if you're going to shut your bike off, if you're not going to ride your bike for a long periods of time, at least um, turn the fuel valve off run the bike until it dies that way at least you know there's no there's no fuel in the carburetor um, so yeah um, anyway uh, the fuel that came out of the vent hose was pretty clear so that's it that's it it just kind of spilled right here and it left a, a freaking stain on the garage but um, yeah so so I sprayed it with a bunch of carb cleaner we're just gonna let it sit for a while um, I don't I think I'm gonna I think that's it for today Ugh! Oh, oh! There we go. I got to move. Woo. All right, I got the slide to move. I just had to. Uh, I think it may need a new needle. Yeah. Um, the needle. Yeah, it's needle. The needle got seized. But the, but the the freaking the butterfly still won't open. So, okay. So I I was able to get the slide. As you saw right there, I was able to get the slide free. I think the needle was stuck. That's why it doesn't happen. Um, spray a little bit more of this stuff in there and work it around. Okay. I have a feeling that we may need to replace the needle on that. So I'll see if I have a needle floating around. Because um, <laughs> the needle is like, it's, um, what, we, what we might be able to do is we might be able to polish that needle. If we can polish the needle, like all the crap out of it, then we can we can still reuse it. So we're going to try that. All right. So uh, so yeah, I, I'm pretty much done for today. I took the tank off, and I took the carb off, and then uh, it's just going to be like this for now. And then we're waiting on the battery. And I think uh, once we get those things squared away, it'll it'll start right up hopefully. Um, and then I was looking at the chain. The chain ain't looking so hot either, man. <laughs> the chain is super rusted. So we're going to have to do some chain stuff on this I, I i should probably take a look at the o-rings on it too we may need to buy a new chain for this bike it's kind of expensive but we'll see we'll, we'll do all the little checks and stuff um but it probably just needs lube on it that's fine all righty so uh yeah that's uh that's progress so so in the next uh the next step is to take that carb apart and take a look at the internal components of it see how how good it is and then give it a good cleaning and then that's it and then uh, and then that's it all right uh and then we'll have the carb all squared away all right here we go okay okay i got it here on the bench and i tried hitting it with a rubber hammer the uh the throttle cam here and uh, and it's it opens I got it to open, but it don't snap back. It's not. It's not smooth. That's for sure. Um, so what we're gonna have to probably do is take the whole throttle thing out and clean it. 
Um, but I think before we do that, I don't really know what to do. I've already sprayed it with car cleaner. Maybe I'll spray some silicone lubricant in there. Hopefully it'll get moving. Okay, some progress. So I sprayed some heavy duty silicone lubricant in there and uh, and it's moving a little bit easier. So that's good. I, know I just have to keep on working it and it'll start moving on its own. I still, no doubt, I think we're going to have to uh, have to clean the whole carb. But I got the slide and the throttle. Oh, there we go. Now it's starting to move. There you go. So whatever was in there that was getting stuck is not is now unstuck. So hallelujah. Okay, so we kind of fixed the throttle problem. It is free now. You just use some silicone lubricant. Um, I wouldn't use WD-40. Uh, yeah, I guess you could use WD-40. The silicone lubricant it kind of it evaporates cleanly and stuff. It doesn't. It's not bad for plastics or rubber. So that's why I used it. Um, I still feel like we probably still need to give it a good cleaning. Uh, uh, actually, it looks fine in there. Um, yeah, it looks okay. But it's free now. There we go. I got it to move. Uh, good old lubricant. <laughs> Solved it. <laughs> um, yeah, so we'll get some... Uh, the, good, the thing is, like, the fuel acts as a lubricant also. So when the fuel moves through this stuff, it lubricates, like, the O-rings and seals and stuff. Hopefully whatever seals that were in there are still good. That's why I'm saying we should probably take the shaft apart and see what it looks like in there. But uh, it seems like it's okay now. But uh, maybe we will go take this apart just to see. It's okay. Um, there, there might be some O-rings in here that got damaged when it got seized. So, so that's good. It works. Um, so I got both the slide and the... Uh, I got both the slide and the uh, the throttle uh, valve to move freely, so that's good. Because before it was stuck, it was seized, and then I hit it with the hammer, and it opened just a little bit, and it got stuck there, you know. So what I might do is uh, spray a little more silicone lube on it, and then just let it sit for a little while. But uh, I think I'm done for today. So uh, the next next time we'll we will actually take the car apart. Uh, you can see this is my handiwork here. I've installed the uh, the Allen head uh, carburetor screws on it. So we'll take that out and we'll clean the inside. And we'll take the slide apart, check the status of the diaphragm and the spring and all that stuff. And then um, and then yeah, we may not need to dip it uh, depending on how good it looks inside there. All right, here's my go.